Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Alt Kings podcast. I'm your host, Tate, and today we are welcoming back Kabila, the leading NFT platform on Hedera, with Jack Timothy and Niu. How are you guys doing today? Doing pretty good. Yeah. How are you? Doing great. Very happy to have you both. And I'd also like to ask Jack, how are you doing? Yeah, really good. I, I didn't want to interrupt Niu there. I was like, Who, who's going to go first? But no, it's really great to be back, man. Looking forward to the interview. Most definitely. What I'm excited about today is V2, Kabila V2, and you guys have recently just launched that. But before we dive into that, I want to know what you guys' roles are at Kabila. So if we could start, Jack, obviously, could you introduce us first to who you are and what you do at Kabila? Copywriting for kind of like website and everything, because we have both the Spanish speaking and the English speaking community at Kabila. So I was I took charge of the English speaking side when it comes to content and community building as well, I'd say. And that's evolved into a CMO position where, you know, New has recently joined us and we have Nico on the Spanish side. So the team is growing. So I've evolved into that more of a CMO position now, still doing a lot of the activities that I just mentioned, just yeah, taking on more responsibility and yeah, got to know obviously the team more, Adrian, Manu, Rafa, Fran over the past year and just taking it to the next level. So yeah. Most That's definitely. We've hosted you before and that was a pleasure. And I can tell that you've made a lot of progress in this journey okay. through not only just Kabila, but your personal brand as well. We always see you posting on X elsewhere, building out your... <clears throat> I also see that you guys have a YouTube channel now for Kabila, posting all the podcasts there as well. It's great to see. It's always nice to expand your horizons and find mm. any other way of being able to create content and market yourself and bring more exposure back to where you want it to be. Now let's head over to Niu. Niu, yeah. welcome to Kabila's team. Congratulations. What's your role? Thanks. I'll introduce myself. My name is Ivo Nieuwenhuizen. Nieuwenhuizen was my username for a long time. Way too long, way too complicated. People started calling me Niu, so I decided to shorten it to exactly that, Niu. I live in the Netherlands and I'm a social worker. Mostly I do multiple stuff, but mostly I work with kids in underprivileged areas in the city, trying to influence their life in a positive way, in a in the nutshell. Yeah, and I've been in Kabbalah for, I think, one, a little bit over a year now as a community member since January, or I think December 29th, I had a call with Manu and he asked me to join the team. No doubt in my mind, of course, I wanted to do that. I don't have a specific skill set that's really compatible for Web3, like the rest. Um, but I'm helping wherever I can. So right now, my main priority is basically getting the word out and getting Jack on as many calls as, uh, as I can with as many cross-chain people, people who are already familiar with Web3, but not so much with Hedera. So basically, we're just trying to ex expand our network getting more eyes on, on our ecosystem, on Kabila. Um, that's the main thing. I also help with uh, being the reply guy for Kabila. As the account grows, you, you have to reply more often. Um, that's why I help as well. Uh, the stress test, stress test event is coming up. Um, I, help, I help with uh, setting, setting up that. Um, yeah, all sorts of stuff. Wherever I can help, I, uh, I chip in. Most definitely. It seems as if your position, I guess someone would title it maybe brand ambassador or brand representative, something along those lines. I started out as an Kabila ambassador. Yep. Nice. But there's not really a clear ambassador program right now. Yeah. I think Manu called me a business developer. I don't even know what it means exactly, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's not that important, I think, what the, the role is. And I think it will evolve over time, That's especially definitely. with Jack. Yeah, Jack being this year, I can help him with a lot of creative stuff as well. And uh, oh, yeah, the newsletter is something that, that I'm starting to do now. So nice. all sorts of stuff. Yeah. Kabila will be getting a newsletter then based off of that information, I assume. We've, We've had, had a newsletter for a long oh, time. You've had one. Okay. <laughs> I have yet to see it then. Yeah. yeah that, that'll a, be nice. What's new to it then? What's being changed or being added? The new novelty is that news is taking over <laughs> because I, I started clever. it January, 2023. So we have, we call it the Kabila monthly digest where we give a re uh, an overview or recap of the month and a few, we add some content in there and the featured launch pad, it goes out at the end of each month. So we've had 12 editions and now 
new from 2024 has taken over. He's already, the first one of this year was already managed by new. So, yeah. Nice. It's How an would you email say he did, Jack? Yeah. Sorry. You say he did good? All right. I think you might have missed that. Did, do you think new did good on his first newsletter? compared to your previous post or whoever previously posted them? He absolutely smashed it. I'll, I'll say that nice. we have a structure in place. So the structure of the new, the format of the newsletter is still the same, but it was very easy to just say, hey, this is the structure. And he just took it and ran with it nice. and did it. I, I think it's going to get even better with the new doing it because the first one was already awesome and it was his first. So it's only going to get better from there. Most definitely. That's exciting. And it's great to see him catching on quickly. I'd love to start out now diving into Kabila V2, and I'd love to know what excites you both the most with this new launch. It's been a long time coming. I'll say that first as well, because for the team, it's been a big moment. It was only a couple of days ago, and I, I'm still feeling, I feel like I'm still coming down from it. It was nearly a year of work that the team, since the V1 was launched, we had the launch pad go live January, December, January, 2023. And it was used all the way through 2023. And we didn't have, I'd say from spring last year, we didn't really have many new features go live because we were putting the energy all into this too and separation of the one platform into the different dApps, the wallet, the yeah. tools, the market. So there was a lot of development that it was a whole new kind of architecture and whole operating system. So it's been a long time coming. It arrived last week. It was a big moment. The team is very happy to see it out in the world and people play around with it. To your question, what I'm most excited about, there's really cool new features, but I think overall it's the it's really the overall user experience. Like the cleanliness, it was already pretty clean before, but being creators ourselves, we've really we have that attention to detail when you're doing specific steps, like when you're creating your NFT or minting or setting up the launch pad. There's this small little things that just make the workflow easier for the creator. So there's just a lot of those small things to make that overall experience just easy and fun and seamless. Obviously, on top of that, there is a lot of fun features with the launch pad, for example. There's You can have up to five different phases now of pre-sale, including a burn mechanism. So you can really gamify, you can really gamify that mint, that pre-sale and leading up to the public. So that, that's a fun part that we've integrated this time around. And there's a few other things as well, but I'll let you share what he's <laughs> excited about. Yeah. Jack's answer was pretty extensively. So you covered uh, mine partially already. <laughs> if I have to pick one, one part, it's definitely the user experience because we started out in January by contacting new people and basically just bonding and, and showing, not in the first place, showing what we have, but taking an interest in what they do, but also of course, showing Hedera and showing Kabbalah. And that's so much nicer now with the new website. It's, yeah, it, I'm looking forward to showing people what, what everything looks like and, and what you can do. I think that's, yeah, the user experience and, and the interface is definitely my favorite part. And if I have to mention one other thing, I like to be a creative thinker and sometimes my mind just goes all places. But if you're busy building the, the center blocks, there's no room for that. We're getting closer to the stage where you can, where the basic blocks are, have been built. So the tools that make up the foundation of Kabbalah are done. And then you can think again about, okay, where can we improve? You can start being creative. There's more room to be creative again. And of course, the plaza still need, have, to be in, have to be built out in the marketplace. So basic blocks are still in the works. But I'm looking forward to when all that is, is done. And then, yeah, there's more room for creative thinking. Most definitely. Yeah, that sounds very quite exciting. I know you mentioned earlier about the soon to come stress test and it, that's coming relatively soon, correct? Yep. Yeah. yeah. From the previous stress test that you guys have done in the past, what really excited me about that was that you guys were willing to test yourself. You were willing to take things to the next step and really put stress on the platform. And it turned out to work in your favor because everything worked to plan for the most part. It didn't seem as if there was much friction with that. And I look forward to this one as if, because there's so much more stress that's going to be applied to the platform and it's only just going to help establish yourself as that foundational piece on Hedera for where you can come to build out NFT collections, to build out a community and to really grow and enhance that experience. 
I'd love to dive into now, what are some of the key components of Kabila's V2 ecosystem and how do they work together to improve the NFT experience? Jack, if you'd like to answer this, by all means. Yeah, absolutely. To the point that you've mentioned just earlier about the stress test, I do think there's going to be more stress this time. Like we've come, yeah. I, I am proud of the team and how far we've come in this last year to think that before I arrived, they didn't really have anyone taking care of the English speaking community. They did yeah. obviously manage it, but most of the focus because their initial community was Spanish. So I think with the way that we've been able to position ourselves over the last year, this stress test should be, I think it's going to be a beast. I think we're going to have, yeah. we're going to have, it's going to be a lottery. There's going to be a massive prize pool as well. We're going to have more projects involved, more communities and more people clicking that button. So I'm very excited to see how that pans out for sure. To your question. What popped to my to my mind straight away is the Kabbalah Academy, because one thing is having the best tools, but the next best thing, or even better, should I say, is know the potential of what you can do with those tools. Because only a few of us really, if we look at the general population, even know what an NFT is. Like, what is an NFT? What does it mean to tokenize your community? What, what are the benefits of doing that? So the Kabbalah Academy, which was also released with the V2, is we go into a lot of detail around these basic concepts, your first steps, but also like strategy, branding, and the different components that you need to consider when leading up to a launch or even considering the idea of launching a project. Because community building by yourself is essential, but there's branding, storytelling. What about pricing? What about timing? What about partnerships, collaborations? How do you present yourself? There's just so many angles. So we've really tried to condense that into an easy to understand academy and we're just going to continue to keep adding to that over the coming months and years also you mentioned the youtube channel there'll be obviously educational content on that side as well so i couldn't stress enough the the that that part of the v2 ecosystem because it's not the most exciting let's say but i think it's the most important together with the wallet the market and the the tools but bringing awareness to what they actually mean because once we if we can really educate people, then we're going to be able to onboard, educate to onboard. That's been my mantra the last week. We did a space the other day on the topic. So that's what I'd love to, to stress answering your question. Yeah, I, I like that answer a lot. The Academy is going to be exciting to see more of as it seems as if anybody who's new to the space will have a place where they can go and find pretty much any information necessary that obviously correlates with Kabila as it's Kabila Academy, but you're able to find pretty much any information regarding to building out a collection, starting your own NFTs, and anything regarding NFTs. It's going to be nice and probably much more as well, I assume. Yeah, you, I, I have a, you can go ahead, Jack, by all means, my apologies. No, I was just going to say there's even, obviously there's a lot of information about Kabila and the tools and the yeah. concept of NFTs, but there's also an introduction to Hedera and why we've decided to build out Kabula on Hedera. What are the reasons? Yeah. So people can also understand the potential of the technology we have on Hedera before they even realize what they can do with Kabula. So there's also that angle that we really try to approach and allow people to understand as well what we have here on Hedera, that the potential we have yeah. here. Yeah, it's great. Now you're actually starting not necessarily from the ground up, but from the roots up. You're starting from the core, Hedera, straight from the middle. Nice. New, I got a question for you. It just came off the top of my head, but what you mentioned earlier about going out and networking and building new relationships cross-chain to onboard back to Hedera, what is your process like in that? When you're going out trying to find these projects or people out there who may be interested in Hedera, what's the steps that you take to find and to meet and connect with these people? X, we all know that. I want to branch out to LinkedIn, et cetera, as well, but right now it's mostly on X. Just looking around, seeing who's active and what they're active in. And let's say there's a Web3 mu musician. I have a look. Maybe they have a website, listen to some songs. Just shoot them a DM. Mostly just not starting right away about Hedera, about Kabila, about what we can do for them. Just about, oh, I love what you're doing. I love what your vision is. This is our vision. I think it would be cool to get on a call sometime because we're always looking to expand our network and make new contacts. We're still... A small industry, yeah, we can learn a lot from each other. And then Jack hops on the call. And from there, people are polite. So if you ask them about what are you doing, then there, there's going to be a question from them at some point. 
what do you do? And then it opens the door to start talking about Hedera, about Kabila. And if there's a synergy, you'll notice there could be a second call. If there's not straight away the intention of doing something on Hedera, that's fine. But they know about it. it it's shocking how little people, how few people, I don't know how you said it, but how many people don't know about Hedera yet who are yeah. pretty, pretty well established in Web3. So that alone, just planting seeds, is, is mostly the planting seeds. And I think we'll see those seeds come to fruition in, in 24 in the bull market. Most definitely. And I, I like that. And I think X is a great place to start because they always, whenever you're coming to, a, say, an X account, a new X account, you always have those recommended accounts right underneath it that are always very similar or correlating to that account in some way, shape or form. And it's nice to just be able to see the account you're mainly focused on and then have options to go to next if you want to continue to work on that networking and branching out of networks. And then you also mentioned LinkedIn. And LinkedIn is honestly a sleeper for when it comes to networking, building out relationships, because you can specifically find what you're looking for based off of a title or job description they might have within their account. And it's just, yeah. it really refines and refines and refines that perfect search for, say, if you're looking for developers, artists, whatever it may be, it might be a little more nitpicky because not necessarily many users use LinkedIn compared to other platforms, but you'll find people who are seemingly legit and actually care about what they do if they have a good resume, of course. <laughs> yeah, 100%. And, and of course... The big difference is X is very different from LinkedIn. And yeah. on LinkedIn, people, it, it's all about networking. People expect yeah. certain DMs. And that, that's less of a thing on, on X. If you're, if someone's not following you, you get in, in the, yeah, in the, how do you say that, spam folder basically for DMs. So that makes it a bit harder. And LinkedIn is all about connecting with people you don't know yet. So I think that's definitely a, a good one to start networking. But yeah, there's also different people. Uh, on LinkedIn. Yeah. Yeah. I know you guys have some new NFTs being released where we're supposed to be swapping our early KES passes and I'm assuming yeah. other passes as well. Jack, you mind explaining the whole process with that and what are some of the benefits users on V2 platform will receive for these NFTs and whatnot? Because I saw that there was a three month, a six month and a 12 month NFT pass as well that you guys were releasing. And I assume that's probably going to be the new creator pass. Yeah, let's just dive into the details. Yeah, so I'll start with that actually, the creator pass, which is essentially, we use the NFT, the creator pass to token gate the tools, the tool gotcha. that we have. So it's also it also serves as like a subscription. So three month, six month, 12 month, depending on your needs and how often you need <laughs> tools. However, we do have a big change with the V2. With the V1, they were fully token gated, all of the tools. With V2, because we want to open up the floodgates and allow people to play around, we have mm -hmm. opened up NFT creation and fungible token creation and one of the smart lists, which means people can create, mint their NFTs, their fungible tokens without a creator pass. So we, we really wanted to open that part up. If you want more, is it more of some of the advanced tools? We call it GoPro with the creator pass kind of thing to use the launch pad, the art engine, and some of the bulk sender, for example, which is quite a popular tool because it saves you a lot of time when you need to do airdrops. If you want to use those, then you're going to need the creator pass. So that's on one, on the one hand, on the V1, we only had one creator pass and it was for six months. So now we have the new three formats. So more flexibility on pricing and yeah. based on people's needs. When it comes to the Kabula early supporters, as you said, we're doing a manual swap at the moment where you can trade in one Kess of the original ones for two of the new or one whitelist. We have two different whitelists for the Kess or the Kabula early supporters that were used within our Gen Zero point system. And just, by, just as I say it, I realize how complicated the old system was, right? We had these three different NFTs each of them had different points. And for people that arrived at Kabila new, it took them, it took me a while <laughs> to, to understand how it worked. So the main reason we're merging the three token IDs into one is to simplify that onboarding process, to simplify the point system. And we also wanted to upgrade the art. I'd love to give a shout out to Marcel from Earthlings because he helped us design this new cast card and it's just a masterpiece. I'm in love with it. 
I think Go it's really figure. Beautiful. They look just like Earthlings NFTs. <laughs> <laughs> it's really beautiful. And we're really yeah, grateful. It for really them. is. Yeah. It's taken, they've taken the old Kess. So it's inspired by the same design with the Berber in the desert. Still, it still maintains that, that special kind of OG concept, but with an upgraded more, I'd say, yeah, it's just more beautiful, right? One thing that's really cool though, is that we've attached to the new Kess card, we've attached the old one. So the old kind of image, the whitelist pass images as well. And the original letter, because the team wrote a letter and signed it and attached it to the original Kabila early supporters. So all of that history is still attached to the new Kess card, which is pretty cool. And going back to the, the tools, the Kess card gives you unlimited access for life. So that's the major utility of the Kabila early supporters. There's other utilities such as pre-sale allocation for the KBL token, staking multipliers, and so on. But those that's the main reason why we did this swap and it's still ongoing. So if you're watching this and you have a, a Kes, an old one in your wallet, make sure you uh, reach out to the team and follow the steps in Discord to, uh, to swap that over and get your beauty. What's the reason behind swapping for say two NFTs? That was correct, right? It, it, you have the K Kabila early, the KES pass, and then you swap it for two. What, what's the reason for the two that you get for the one? So there's two reasons. One, because of the two, we had the Kes, the old Kes, which was worth two points and the whitelist passes were one point. And because we couldn't split the Kes in two for the whitelist, that makes sense. Now the Kes, the new one it is worth one point, right? So if you have the whitelist, you get one. If you get the Kes, you get two because the old one was worth two points. So there's, that's the rationale around the points. Also the price of a Kes is quite high. So having this, cause we're doubling the supply, you could say, will maybe bring the price down a little bit and it will make it accessible for people more you know, to, to maybe onboard and grow the holder count of the Kes as well. So that could be, yeah. that's a secondary thing. It was more of the points to really simplify that. And it's one point, one Kes. Okay. You get two over here, one over here, and it simplifies the whole thing. Most definitely. Yeah. Maybe to add a little bit about the points. If people are wondering what those points are, if you get up to eight points in this scenario, eight cash, so it's really easy. It used to be, I had two points for the cash, one point for the whitelist and made it complicated. Also, the fact that the whitelist batches still had a set whitelist on the NFT was confusing for new people. It's no longer a whitelist token, um, but it still says that. So it they, they, they just needed to get traded in. Um, but if you get to eight points, you have you are supreme cash. You have a supreme cash role, which comes with uh, different benefits. Sixteen points is a legendary cash role, which comes uh, with different benefits. In the start, there were the supreme cash and legendary cash NFTs, and you could basically save up to eight points and claim a supreme cash NFT. Um, but all the cash and all the wireless badges could only be used once. And all the Supreme cash and legendary cash NFTs have been, have been given away now. So right now it's, it's just for the roles. If you have 16 points, you have the legendary cash roll comes with extra benefits. Most definitely. Yeah. We have that early KS as well. And I just can't wait to swap and get all the benefits from Kabila V2. Yeah. My next question would be, how does Kabila V2 launch address existing challenges and limitations in the Hedera NFT space? And what are the improvements users can expect from this launch? We already went through a couple of them. Is there any others that you might be able to highlight though, Jack? Yeah, I guess it would be, like, if we could touch on the specific limitations first, do you have any in mind? What kind of limitations? Because the first that comes to mind would be the throughput of the launch pad. I think the new one, I'm pretty sure that the, the V1 was pretty much up there, but I know for sure that the V2, it now uh, can hold up to a 10,000 10, TPS mint, like awesome. throughput. So it's equal to the network. So that's why the stress test is really gonna put that to the test. Yeah. But yeah, it's really, it's built for that kind of TPS. When I'm trying to think of Think of the why, Jack. Think of the why. What may, why did everything get enhanced to the way it did? Obviously, it's updating. People love to update or companies love to update their tools and whatnot. But what are yeah. some of the whys for these updates? Was it to enhance the experience? Was it to 
craft something more unique than what it was already? What are some of those whys by chance? Yeah, you, think, you can always touch in two if you have any. Yeah, for sure. So overall, as I was mentioning earlier, the user experience was a big part of the change because everything yeah. was in within one platform. You had the wallet and the tools and the launch pad. It was all, all, it was all in one, which was, it was perfect for that first year. But as you build out an ecosystem and it grows and you have more users, separating it into different dApps was a way to make them more powerful, let's say, by giving them their own kind of standalone backend would, would, will improve the throughput and the user experience and the seamlessness of each of them, whether it's the wallet that people could now download and have it as, as a Chrome extension or on their phones or the tools. And the market was also you know, pulled out of the all-in-one platform. So you can now go with your wallet, connect to the market and mint on the launch pad without having to go through the tools. So I think it was also a way to make that onboarding to whatever you need easier and more familiar because people are used to having a wallet, right? Or they're used to going to a marketplace or going to tools if they need to, not so much going to a place where you have everything. I don't know. I think it was a bit, a bit unique in that regard and it worked for a while, but now with the separation of the dApps, which improves the performance, but it also feels more familiar for the ecosystem. You guys have really yeah. created a place where you can do everything there now. Everything is at the tip of your hands through Kabila now. We have yet to see a place like this on Hedera. And that's like the first thing that came to mind to me was we have a centralized, not necessarily centralized, but a central hub where you can go and find everything you need to build out NFTs. You have your launch pad, you have your creator tools, you have your academy, you have the community, and most importantly, you have everything that Kabila has to offer and incubate, and it's just going to continue to build out more and more. I really like how you guys have implemented your very own wallets now compared to, you don't necessarily have to only use Hashpack. Hashpack's a great wallet, mm -hmm. don't get me wrong, but now that you have your own, it's your own. So you can do whatever you want with it. You can make things yours. You can upgrade the experience. You can maybe even add those backgrounds like Hashpack loves to do as well. Yeah. yeah. My final was... question, or go, go, go. Now, you wanted to say something new? I just wanted to add, you just yeah. took my memory there as you were talking. One, one of the reasons we went for an all-in-one ecosystem was very much for the onboarding of Web2 brands and communities. Because if they're new to Web3, we have the academy yeah. to educate. But if I then tell you, go to Discord over here to set that up, go to over here for the wallet, over there for the marketplace, and over here for the tools, it's just so overwhelming that most yeah, people will most say, you definitely. know what, I'll wait until, or, or they'll just say no straight away because it's just too, it's too overwhelming to learn all these different platforms in one go. Mm -hmm. Whereas if I go, hang on a minute, I have Kabula, mm -hmm. your wallet, you have your tools, your, mar your marketplace for primary sales, for secondary sales. And then of course we have the plazas coming, which would be, the equivalent of a discord like a token gated social space then we nice. can really approach brands and offer that experience and that ease into web3 right so that that was the main reason we wanted to create that all in one because we've we had spoken to a lot of these web2 brands and there was too much friction so we were really trying to remove that friction with the all in one hub nice that's yeah. incredible and you have something to say yeah, I had basically the exact same thing to say. Sorry. <laughs> you can, if, you, if you want to onboard people and you tell them how important brand NFTs can be for their brand and, and then go on to refer them to all kinds of other yeah, platforms, it, it just doesn't work. An extra thing on the using the native wallet, it's also just a technical thing. For some tools that the Kabbalah offers, you have to have a, a native wallet. You cannot, you can't use a uh, hashtag or something else. You have to have a native wallet. So there's that. But what I, yeah, this is something that came into my mind. I think also with the Plazas, where NFTs can go, it's, I made a post about it recently. Right now you have these center stage NFT projects that are interactive, but there's a big following, a pretty big NFT supply at least a couple of hundred, usually thousands of NFTs, and so pretty big. I think also because on, on other chains like Solana or Ethereum, uh, lots of creators still need developers to assist them in, in creating a launchpad or something. But I think in the future, just like 
the way we're interacting right now with, with video calling. Yeah. It's one thing to be broadcasting. It's another thing to, to come together with, with the three of us or with 10 people. I think there will be a lot of small communities around, around hobbies people have or groups of friends who decide to create an NFC uh, just, just for the 15 people and, and do fun stuff with it. I think NFTs will be even more mainstream than a lot of people expect them to get right now. And yeah, in order to do that, you need these tools in one place. I think it needs to be very user friendly. You don't, if you have to code something, yeah, 90% of people will exit. Tools in one place built on the most sustainable DLT. Yeah. That's, that's all you really need. This has been a great show so far. And I just want to say thank you guys for taking the time. I have one last question for you both. I'd like to simply ask, in what ways does Kabila V2 launch align with Hedera's mission and vision for the future of NFTs and decentralized applications? And what long-term impact can be expected from Kabila? So, when you when you as as soon as you answer as soon as you ask that question, I thought of what Lehman says, which is everything is going to be tokenized, right? And we really God have damn right it is. Vision. We have the same vision, right? And we're more focused on brand, we call them brand NFTs um, and tokenizing communities within the creator economy. We believe any whether it's a personal brand, whether you're a musician, whether you have a fishing kind of group of 50 people, or you have a gaming studio or any kind of online brand business, any, every brand will be tokenized because it, it gives ownership back to you. It gives to the creator, to the founder. Right now we have our communities on platforms that own our community. They own our content. They own our data. They own everything. They monetize us. So we actually get a small percentage of the actual value that we create also. So this is what's currently happening. And I think people are starting to wake up to that. And what's the solution? Brand NFTs. How to do that? Use Kabula. Use the tools, use your decentralized wallets, use the, all of the infrastructure that's being built to tokenize your community so you own the relationship between you and your holders, you and your follower, you and your customer. You own that direct channel. Similar to how we used to collect emails, you can now just give them an NFT and you then own that channel. That's the new Web3 pathway and ownership of community or customer base. So that's our main focus is to empower creators, empower brands and founders, entrepreneurs to tokenize their community and take back what's really theirs in the first place. Because right now their Twitter account could be suspended tomorrow. Years of yeah. work building up an account and it's gone like that. It's, it's crazy, but it's the reality we live in. So yeah, that's our mission. And I think it aligns very well with Hedera and the idea that everything's going to be tokenized and we're just doing our best to provide all of the tools and necessary education so people can leverage the potential of Web3, NFTs, ownership, and obviously the technology we have on Hedera. Most definitely. Great answer. Yeah. And if I may add, carving out a piece of cyberspace, I think one of Lehman's most famous quotes you need tools to be able to do that, and we're building it. So, oh, while well, the dev team is building it, so. <laughs> yeah, I always, I always say we, and I'm like, I'm not building <laughs> anything. <laughs> I'm just talking about it. <laughs> I feel the same with my developers as well. It's just we give them the ideas, they put it to work, and that's that. When can we expect the Kabila Plaza? That's my last question. <laughs> the updates on that, or is, is it just up in the air? So I can say something, but there's no way we can say any dates. Before that, sure. we have the secondary marketplace. We have another couple of tools. We have like sales reports and analytics. We really think it's important for creators. Once they've done a mint or a launch, they can actually see the numbers. If you need to do your taxes, you need to do stuff like that. That's really important if you're running a brand or a business or a community even. So they're coming first, but the initial concept of the plazas has already been fleshed out. A lot of the UI, UX is mapped out. What's What we need to... What needs more time is the actual architecture and, and the development of the yeah. DAP. We're hoping, or Manu's hoping, we're hoping that by middle of this year, we can have a first iteration, but that might be you know, Q3, Q2, Q3. I'd be happy if we had any iteration out this year, just to get the ball rolling, because we're going to have many iterations. Yeah. We're going to have different versions and they'll get, we'll probably start with something simple with a few features. And then we'll keep adding similar to what we've done with Kabula tools and everything we've been doing and just get that feedback from the community 
and remove what they don't want, add what they want. And cause we're building it for creators. We're creators. Yep. So we have a good idea, but we also need that feedback loop with the community. So we're gonna, yeah, as soon as we've got these couple of tools out of the way and we've really refined cause the V2 is just launched. There's probably still some, a few bugs. That's why we have the stress yeah. test. I'd say in a month, two months, and we've got the marketplace out and the other couple of things, we'll just really double down on, on the plazas. And hopefully, like I say, by Q3, Q4, sometime this year, we can have the first version of the plazas out. It's going to be what brings it all together. And I'm extremely excited. Yeah. Me too. Any closing thoughts for you both? Thank you both for taking the time today. I truly enjoyed this conversation. I don't have any closing thoughts, really. Thanks for having us and I appreciate you uh, getting up at well before 6 a.m. and taking the time. So. Of course, Neil. Yeah. yeah, same. Just give you some flowers, man. I love what you're doing, not just here with the podcast, but at Royal Labs with the U2s. Yeah, you're a pillar within the HBAR community. And uh, yeah, it's just been a lot of fun here on the podcast. And I look forward to what we're all building together, right? It's it's an exciting time. It's I think this year is going to be a big year, maybe the next couple of years. So yeah, appreciate you for taking this time to interview. And it's been fun with new, the, the new dream team. We've been working together from, for the last six weeks. And yeah, it's going to be, we're going to rock this year. Yeah, Most I think so. Hey, yeah, maybe it's December, of this year, December of this year, we all three will be up in the slopes in Europe somewhere, skiing down some black diamonds. Let's go. <laughs> That'll be awesome. You would. All right. With that being said, thank you both for taking the time once again. And ladies and gentlemen, if you enjoyed today's content, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And we will see you all in the next episode. Peace. Ready to transform your learning experience? Step into the future with the Learn to Earn platform on Hedera. Choose how you learn. Academic books in hard copy or NFT form. That's right, NFTs. Whether you prefer the traditional feel or a digital interactive journey, the choice is yours. Dive into the NFT, not just for the book, but for all the tools you need for success. Download the book, access tests, all within a seamless, immersive interface. Forget traditional logins. Simply scan the QR code, connect to our platform, and start your learn to earn journey. Pass your tests and watch your success turn into real rewards with Gcoin, our exclusive digital currency. Imagine learning at your own pace, acing exams, and reaping tangible benefits. It's not just education, it's a transformative journey towards success. Join the future of learning at gilmore-estates.net. Scan, learn, earn, it's that simple, and it's revolutionary.